Hey guys, welcome back to my live video stream here on Facebook. If you've been following me over the past uh, couple of weeks on here, we've been going over a lot of uh, questions and topics relating to competition prep, training, workouts. In fact, you join me live at the world famous Gold Gym here in uh, Venice, California. And uh, for the past week, we've been talking a lot about meal prep, nutrition, food, and really how to establish and break down uh, your daily calorie intake, macros, protein, carbs, and fats, percentages, and kind of uh, meals that fit within those requirements. So back on Monday, and you can look back on uh, my video playlist here on my uh, Facebook channel, you can see how I established uh, a calorie intake and a macro breakdown for protein, carbs, and fats, and giving you options as well for ecto, meso, and endomorph. Today, I'm actually gonna go through, I've already got prepared all of the meals behind me and based on uh, the meal chart that I've created which you guys can get for free as well I'll show you that later on in this video uh, we're gonna look at how each meal fits in with those requirements and also which food groups I've chosen to best represent the protein carbs and fats so definitely want you guys posting all of the uh, the questions on here I, uh, I do have the camera set on a, a tripod here so I've got my laptop to look through some of the questions but Please bear in mind it can be a little bit tricky when, uh, when I'm filming live, uh, trying to make sure everything is in kind of shot with the little uh, iPhone setup that we have to use here and also try and answer the questions. So as per usual, I do a lot of talking and actually show you the, uh, the meals and the breakdown first. That'll be about 20 minutes and then I'll do my best to look through on my laptop here at the, uh, the questions that you guys are posting. Last time I think we got about 700, 750 questions. So yeah. <laughs> Apologies that I can't go through all of them. I'm going to try and cover as much as possible. And like I say, each of these live video streams are going to be specific on a particular topic. Today, we're looking at uh, meal guidance, meal preparation, and really finding foods that fit within those meal requirements. So anything about fitness, training, weight loss even, or muscle gain, we'll cover that over following uh, streams. Again, this is every Monday and Wednesday and Friday. I realize we're, uh, we're on Thursday today, but if you see outside next door, they're building two massive houses, so there's a lot of noise going on. So uh, if you're hearing hammering or drilling, that's what's going on. So I'm doing my best to try and uh, to keep this going because I think it's, uh, it's good information and, and we're able to interact and answer a lot of your questions and actually show you in real time. So with that being said, this is the meal pack here. Um, I'll show it up to the camera soon. And you can get this uh, on, on my website, send it to you completely for free. And it's pretty much exactly the same breakdown. There's also a meal planner, which is on my website, Rob Richard's shop, that will allow you to mess around, change up the numbers, put your weight and macro um, percentages in, and then really just fit the meals to those requirements. So this is kind of what we're working on. Now, on Monday, I went through uh, my meal prep the, the actual calorie amounts and the macros and we established at 181 pounds, I was gonna aim for 15 calories per pound of body weight, giving me a daily calorie total of, might be a little bit different here, but it's about 2,700, 2,700 calories. I've actually got 2,715 here. Uh, from that, I, let me just backtrack a little bit. It's easy to follow guidance from Myself or anyone else out there, nutritionist, dietitian, um, coach, really at the end of the day, you've got to use that as your starting point for guidance and then based on a number of different factors, how it's working for you, how it fits into your kind of daily life. And by that, I mean, it's easy to cook up six meals and kind of fit it into the plan, but it may not always be easy to stick with those six meals. So, or you kind of miss a time or you miss a meal back home and, and it's really then you start to start to freak out a little bit, especially if you're close to a competition. Oh my gosh, I missed out on a meal. Uh, I got a weight train now. How do I change up all of my post-workout meals? So we'll, we'll try and cover that. Uh, but really my point is this, even for me as well, is a starting point. I start with my numbers. I start with my percentages. I start with the meals that fit into that. And again, to reiterate, there's a lot of conflicting information out there and views on if it fits your macros, just kind of eat good healthy food, don't worry about calorie counting. Some people do like to 
really weigh and prep each of their meals. So this is my way. This is what I've been doing for the past 10, 11 years since I started my first competition back in 2005. This is just the way that I feel comfortable with. I know it delivers results for me and I feel I have some kind of control over checking on weekly or bi-monthly checkpoints if my conditioning, if my weight, if just how I'm mentally feeling and looking is not on point to what I expect it to be based on there being an end goal. And by that I mean, typically we start now, 10 or 12 weeks or 16 weeks later, that's when we want to be on point for a competition or a photo shoot. So we have a, a set time frame and it's easier then to work back and say, okay, at this point or this point, I therefore expect realistically to see that my weight or my abs or my conditioning, my muscle separation is improving. And if it's not, for me, it's always been going back to the diet and saying, hmm, my calories are too high or too low. My carbs, I'm not having enough. I need to change the, the carb distribution around, which to a lot of people might seem just, what's the point? Is that really gonna make a difference? In my opinion and in my training, it, it has. That's how I've been able to get to my level of conditioning really just through the diet. So the only thing I can say is if, if you're interested in this, I'm putting out all the information, give it a try. Give yourself, if you can, three to four weeks to be absolutely committed and definitely take some photos, stats, and even just write down your, your general mood and how you're feeling at the beginning of those four weeks. Because here's the thing, if you do follow a plan, and I'm trying not to sound too kind of cliche or that kind of motivational speech type thing here, but if you do set and commit to a plan and you follow the necessary steps, the real thing that you're doing here is taking ownership. Ownership of your own um, like challenge, I guess. You know, We need to eat and if you're fixated in a very um, set way with certain meals, certain macros and amounts, your body will start to change. How and in what direction is really determined by a couple of different factors. How much you're eating, uh, types of foods, how often you're training, your metabolism, but all of those are kind of uh, variable factors. The nutrition, or at least how much you put into your body is fixed in the sense that you're not eating less or more one day, you're pretty much trying to stick to the same amount. So that's really what we're covering today. Um, I can see everyone posting questions. I saw some guys keep, keep, uh, keep them coming. Like I said, I'll try and get to as many as I can. You might just have to keep putting that out, out there and uh, kind of spamming them so I can see them once I'm on the laptop. But I'll let you know when, when we do that. All right, first off, let's kind of get to the plan and really get some real, uh, I guess, let's look at the meals that fit into the plan. It's easy to talk about numbers and say, oh, for breakfast and lunch, I have this much calories and protein, but what does that look like in the terms of food and what types of food? So um, here it is, 181 pounds I am. Uh, I posted a video a couple of days ago, my body fat's around 8%. It's, it's a good starting point, 8%, 10%. If I commit and follow this for the next 12 weeks with small modifications, which is why I'm doing this live stream, to really show every aspect that I can, I, I can expect my, my body fat levels to get down to, not easily, but between 5 and 4%, pushed a little bit more with types of cardio in my training. So everything does kind of fit together like a jigsaw puzzle, providing you're kind of doing everything, you're optimizing everything that you can and you have a pretty clear understanding about what it is that's gonna affect those changes. So we'll try and cover as much as that over the coming weeks and months, and much of this information is already on my website. Anyway, that gives me um, about 2,700 calories, and as I said from the other video, I've decided to give me a starting point for the next four weeks of 40% protein, 40% carbs, 20% fat. Call that kind of a baseline. That's what I'm gonna stick with for four weeks, unchanged, just to get my body into a, a set routine. So what does that mean in terms of how much protein, carbs, and fats? Again, this is on last week's video, um, or Monday's video. It's about 270 grams of protein, 270 grams of carbs, and 60 grams of fat. That gives me that total daily calorie intake of 2,700. And then I broke that down into six meals. Technically seven, because my post-workout was split into an A and B. And by that, I mean my post-workout nutrition was halved between having a kind of a, a protein shake and some fast-acting sugars, and then 30 minutes later, a smaller uh, solid meal. And we'll get to that when we cover that. 
Protein and fats are distributed evenly across every meal. So that was, it's about 45 grams of protein in every meal. I've got the meal times here. We're gonna look at the exact food and, and also how I prepared it. And I did say I was gonna show cooking live, but I figured because of the way this, I just moved into a new house. So the way this kitchen is set up, uh, you'd be looking at my back for about 40 minutes. So probably not what you guys wanna be uh, looking at or wasting your time on. So I, I cooked all of the meals earlier today. And another point on that, People might think, oh, it takes too long to kind of prepare and cook. Maybe in the early stages, but now that I kind of know the amounts and the types of foods, I mean, I can cook a full day's meal in about 40 minutes. And by that, I mean, once all of the ingredients is just out from the fridge without even having weighed it yet, if I start the, the timer, 40 minutes later, I'm gonna have all of my food. So 40 minutes spent each day or every couple of days creating your meals is really no time at all to have all of your food perfectly prepped up, packaged, and ready to eat at set times. So protein and fats were split evenly. 45 grams of protein per meal. Fats is 10 grams of fat. And then carbs, if, you, if you're just joining me from anywhere in the world, because we're live here, welcome. I urge you just to kind of quickly um, scan through some of the other videos. Again, go to my playlist here on uh, Facebook and you can see my live playlist so you can see all of the videos that we've done um, up until now. I talked about uh, my carb distribution. Instead of just breaking down my carbohydrates equally and putting them into each meal, I said I took half of that and divided that between breakfast and post-workout because those were the times where I felt my body needed the most amount of um, glycogen, carbohydrates, muscle fuel, if you like. And then the remaining meals, with the exception of the last meal, was uh, kind of the, the rest of that daily carb intake, the remaining 50% split evenly. So. I'm sure a lot of this sounds either pointless, too numbers heavy, or just what's the need for it. This is why I'm doing this, to be able to present my way. It's not just I cook some food and eat it. There's, there's a method behind all of this madness, or so the saying goes. Let's get started on, uh, on the actual first meal. Because I'm either going to attract flies back here, or my dog's going to run in, and uh, you're going to see her jumping up back, and that's just going to be a nightmare. So breakfast, meal one. Um, this I typically have at 7 p.m. I'm gonna try and hold up as much as I can. Uh, I don't know if you guys wanna be able to screenshot that or just go to my site and download the actual um, same thing. Breakfast, now bear in mind I normally do cardio, at least I try to do uh, fasted cardio. Wake up in an ideal situation, a little bit harder now that I'm older and got more things going on with my life, but if, if regardless of age, if you're gonna commit yourself to getting in better shape, seeing like how really, really how good you can get your body, then you just gotta do it. You gotta wake up earlier. Your motivation, that, that is the why. Why should you be getting up and spending money on food prep and the, the commitment to training? You'll see and you'll know when you get in that level of conditioning and it's one of the best feelings to be able to push your body to somewhere that you've never been and just feel in control of yourself. Breakfast. So normally I do cardio in the morning. I wake up and do fasted cardio. Either interval training or low intensity, we'll cover that on uh, another video. But breakfast is about 7 a.m. And for this, this is where I get a higher carb intake. So this is 25% of my daily carb intake, uh, protein, carbs, and fats. So based on the breakdown, just up here, I calculated, for me, my breakfast, I need 45 grams of protein, 67 grams of carbs, and I'm basing that off 25% of my daily carb intake, and 10 grams of fat, which is one sixth of my fat intake. You can see how I start to really like and appreciate numbers when I get into this. All right, great, what does that really mean? We've got our protein, carbs, and fats, and calories, but what does breakfast look like? Wish I could move the camera around, but as we know from uh, last week's gym video, it gets very shaky, so I'm just gonna hold the food up. Let me show you the breakfast that we've got. Try not to put it too low because it'll fall, but it's basically uh, oatmeal and some kind of, uh, it's an omelet. So I'm gonna break down the numbers and what's in it. So I start with the ingredients. This is very uh, kind of uh, working from the ground up instead of just saying, well, I need protein, let's get some eggs in there, or let's get a protein shake. And yes, there are tons and tons of variations. It's not like I have to eat the same food every day. 
to a degree, as long as I can change up the food ingredients, like instead of eggs or I've got some turkey in there, yeah, I could have a protein shake and use different carb source. Not so much this if it fits your macros um, approach. I know some people swear by that and it might work great for them. This is just my approach. It has to be the right type of food. I'm not gonna substitute a protein or carbohydrate for a lesser quality. So my three rules for nutrition are um, portioning, as in like a set amount of food that fits in with my prescribed macros, if you like. Uh, meal frequency or nutrient timing. And by that I mean trying to have the same amount of food at the same time, you know, give or take maybe 20 or 30 minutes at most. But by that I mean I'm gonna stick to a schedule. I'm gonna eat breakfast at this time, meal two, meal three, and so on. My routine becomes very, very regimented. And that's how I'm able to then make some slight changes to, uh, to be able to get those uh, little differences when I feel I might reach the plateau, I'm not seeing any difference, I'm feeling more drained. I'm going to affect and change one or two small things and my body will notice that difference. Um, so it's about food quality as well. I'm still obviously caring about health, wellness. I'm 32 now. I'm, it's not old by any means, but compared to when I was 19 and 20, I, I felt like I could get away with a lot more, meaning I could be out, stay up, get up at 5 a.m. in the morning and just do it. Now I'm starting to feel the effects a little bit more, but I'm still just as committed. So what this really means, I start with the ingredients and then I match it up with the amounts. This might seem, uh, I'm sure that, I, I know there's plenty of apps for this, but apps, as you may have found, have uh, some issues or uh, roadblocks when it comes to wanting to either change up certain food types or different timings or meal portioning from, from what I've found, so I just made it myself. All right, this is what I've got for breakfast. Egg whites, 200 grams. I base everything on grams, and this is um, pre-cooked, meaning chicken breast, potatoes, rice. If I give you an amount, it's all before it's cooked, so dry weight. So I start with the food type and the amount, and the reason I do this is because, I mentioned this before, every food group pretty much will have a mixture, a combination of proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Rarely will foods, maybe tuna or, or you know, certain foods like that, will just have protein with no carbohydrates or no fat. But it's not as easy to say, I'm going to take um, eggs and I'm going to add this, oatmeal, and I'm going to add some healthy fats from almond butter and I need this much because when you start adding in a different amount, it's going to push up or affect your other numbers. So my whole point is to match within the gram, <laughs> this is really kind of, fickle to the point, uh, to the gram, the numbers that I've set, and this is how I've done it. 200 grams of egg whites, it's about six egg whites. One whole egg, it's 50 grams. Uh, turkey breast, now I've added turkey breast in to bump up my protein to get to those 45 grams. Otherwise, if I'm just having egg whites alone, one egg white from a medium or large uh, egg will give about three grams of protein. That's taking out the yolk. I know some people were giving me, uh, giving me a hard time for always kind of banging on about not having yolks. Look, the point is, if I include yolks in to bump up my protein, my fat content will massively spike up. And even though I'm allowing 10 grams of fat, which is just under two whole eggs, I'm naturally getting fat from um, the eggs. There's some naturally occurring fats in oatmeal too. So I wanna try and keep all of my numbers to point. So that's why. It's about changing to get the best outcome rather than just, well, I want almond butter for my fat. I love almond butter, but if I put a tablespoon or a teaspoon in there, to get the numbers that I want, it's going to be that much. Is it going to make a big difference if I put more in? No, but if you start doing that between every meal and then be like, is it really going to make a difference? Your body could fluctuate by an extra 10 or 15% calories each day. And when you start to get down to the like final couple of weeks or a month out from that show or just wanting to progress even further, it's those kind of fluctuations that I felt will hold you back. Again, we're talking like minute differences here, but if you're watching this to get into the best possible shape, you need to be focused on those minute um, factors. So uh, look, six egg whites, one whole egg. I used 40 grams of turkey. Uh, that's pretty much the protein. Also, I put a little bit of uh, balsamic vinegar on there. So in the early stages, I'm not going to worry too much about, um, it's pretty good, doesn't it? I might eat that one after. 
in the early stages, I'm not going to worry too much about sources. Uh, I've got a couple over here. These are uh, pretty basic ingredients. So mustard, just distilled vinegar, water, mustard seed, a little bit of salt, spices, and turmeric. Nothing like um, hydrogenated vegetable oil or um, corn syrup. And then there's fat-free balsamic vinaigrette. It's not as tasty or as thick as some of the other, you know, sauces you can get out there, but literally a tablespoon, I think that was a heat tablespoon, so half an initial serving, and that only added in less than two grams of sugar. So in the first couple of uh, weeks, I'm okay at keeping sauces in if I want. Um, limes, lemons on top of even egg whites, or uh, uh, definitely tuna, which I've got coming up. So don't be too hard on yourself in the early weeks. As long as you get into a routine, that's the most important thing. I'd rather you have ketchup, mustard, uh, hummus a little bit if you want to add some extra flavor in and other sauces and then have somewhere to go to be able to take them out, remove them, reduce them in the coming weeks. The most important thing is you're pretty much set on your uh, calorie and your macro split. So when it comes to carbohydrates, a couple of different options here and I'll cover them um, in different videos if you guys are interested. Oatmeal, so 60 grams, again, that's just measuring the oats before I add water and cook them. Raisins, 20 grams and uh, 80 grams of banana. We ran out of banana, so I kind of substituted it with strawberry, but a little bit of cinnamon on there. It's cooked with uh, water, a little bit of stevia in there as well. It's sweeter, I'll show you that later. I'm gonna actually make the final, my nighttime dessert. This was a popular video a couple of years ago. We're gonna make it again, and it's, if you haven't tried it yet, it. Yeah, try it. You, you're gonna, you can thank me later for it. Um, so this is breakfast. I'll go over it again. 200 grams of egg whites, about six egg whites in total. Uh, one whole egg, so egg white and yolk. I whip that up, make an omelet out of it, sit it on low heat. That's how I'm able to get it like that. Pretty thin, but it's, it was flexible enough back then when it was warm to be able to fold over and put the uh, turkey in. It does have some spinach and mushroom in there. And uh, when it comes to veg, I include them in pretty much every meal, maybe with the exception of my nighttime and post-workout. But um, I don't include them as part of my numbers. So especially if it's green, broccoli, courgette or zucchini, uh, green beans, spinach, kale, it's pretty much as much as I want to put in. It's, it's a low calorie food, uh, doesn't really deliver that much um, careful here, macronutrients in terms of affecting my numbers and, and any carbohydrates are typically fibrous, meaning that they're locked, the body can't access, the, access them, it's not going to give me the same type of carbs I need as uh, sugar or as other starches, potatoes, brown rice and whatnot. Okay, um, so that's what, that's what this is, that's breakfast and it matches pretty much, I don't know if you can see down here, but it matches pretty much to the gram what I set up for um, those 45 grams of uh, protein. In fact, it is 45 grams of protein, 67 grams of carbs, and 10 and a half grams of fat. So I'm within less than a gram of my set numbers. That's breakfast. Let's move on to uh, meal two. So an interesting thing here about um, meal meals two, three, and four, if you remember, if you saw uh, Monday's video, I call these day meals, and, and by that I mean I'm just um, separating these six meals, if you like, into breakfast, I've got post-workout, and I've got nighttime meal. All three of those are different. There's more carbs in breakfast. Uh, post-workout is technically the same, but I break that into A and B for fast acting like a protein shake and then a smaller meal, and then nighttime typically has no carbohydrates or a lower amount. So that leaves the other three meals. And I call these day meals because typically I'd, I'd eat them between after breakfast and my post-workout. And they're all the same uh, macronutrients. So they're exactly the same amount of protein, carbs, and fats in each one, which gives me two things. One, it allows for variation. If I've got three meals here, all of which have the same protein, carbs, and fats that I've allocated to it, I can mix and match my proteins, change up my carbs, which is what I've done for each of these three meals now, just to show this variation. Doesn't mean I'm gonna have to spend the extra time and hassle in making three different meals, but if I want to, I can have two of the same meals one day and a different one for meal three, or this is the other point. 
you're not too bothered about variation and you, um, you just want to be like follow the numbers exactly and time conscience, you can just have the same meal times three. So this is what uh, I've got for meal two, 10 a.m. You can change it up and we talked about this later that you can shift some of the numbers to have a little bit more in your lunch meal, therefore meal two is more of a snack. But I, this is how I start and they're not big meals as, as you'll see. Meal two, 45 grams of protein, 10 grams of fat, carbohydrates, this is about 13%, 13-14% which is the remaining 50% of my day carbs split between these meals with a little bit more for night time. What it means is 36 grams of carbs. So this meal here, meal two, is basically uh, 165 grams of chicken, uh, yam potato or sweet potato 130 grams and then uh, I put some flaxseed oil on there, it's about three grams so that gives me Again, within a gram, exactly those 45 grams of protein, 36 grams of carbs, 10 grams of fat. Uh, I've got some greens on there, broccoli, green beans. Didn't weigh them. I lightly cooked them or lightly steamed them, so they're still kind of crunchy. They're not soggy and soft, which will um, start to break down and affect the, um, that, that tougher cell wall. So to get the benefits of the fiber, the more you cook something, you're going to start to break down and lessen the bonds, making it... Um, I mean, if it's a carbohydrate like potatoes, you're gonna affect how quickly the body will be able to break down and get the um, sugar from that. We'll get onto that. This is what meal two looks like. I'll show you again. So how I cook the yam, or sweet potato there, same kind of family. I chop everything into cu uh, cubes, and then based on the amount that I need, so look, if I was to have this meal three times, for meal two, meal three, meal four, Easiest thing I'll just do is say, all right, all of those carbs, 130 grams times uh, three for each of those meals, 390 grams. I just chop up the yams, put them into a bowl on a, a little set of scales, put it to zero, and make sure I've got 390 grams of cubular yams in there. Just easy to measure. And then um, I'd lightly kind of pan fry them or steam them in a pan with water, boiling water, and then it, there's a kind of a a sieve on top that I'll effectively steam them. Even that will start to reduce and, and uh, lessen the rate at which my body, so making it more of a higher glycemic food in, in that kind of sense, especially if I mash it up and bake it. But that makes it easy to be, uh, to be on the game and to prepare all of my meals pretty easily. Uh, I've kept this one bare for demonstration. Look, you, can, you can mix it up, you can put some of those sauces on there. You can change the veg around, uh, use different spices when you cook. I'm not too worried, like I said in the first few weeks, about being absolutely on point with my spices, making sure that they might be sodium free. I'm not using a huge amount and it's not gonna make a big difference. I'm still getting my body into that kind of regular um, daily routine, if you like. So that's meal two. Leave this one here, meal three. So meal three, I changed up each of the protein, carbs, and fat source. It's exactly the same um, calorie-wise and protein, carbs, and fats, each of these meals. So what I've got here, 140 grams of turkey breast. I just made them into a, a turkey patty there, lightly pan-fried them. Uh, so same amount as, um, no, chicken was 165 grams. So turkey is a little bit higher in protein per 100 grams. 140 grams of turkey breast, 45 grams of brown rice, Again, cooked in water, and I weighed that out before cooking it. It's not like I cooked the brown rice and then uh, then weighed it. So that was dry weight. Uh, and for fats, I got avocado. So it's 40 grams. So these two meals are pretty much exactly the same macro split, but just different protein, carbs, and fat sources. Okay, meal uh, four. This is a great one too. So this one looks a little bit more here. This is the same calories and macro percentages as the other two meals. This is 175 grams of uh, tuna, 50 grams of brown rice. I put seven grams of uh, flaxseed oil in there and then it's kind of beefed out a little bit because I used some uh, vegetable mix in there as well and just added that raw. So those are my day meals. Each of those matches the uh, macro and uh, calorie breakdowns for me. 
And then we get on to post-workout. So typically, any one of these meals I'd have as a pre-workout, about an hour before I actually get down to the gym and start lifting, gives my body time to uh, actually digest, absorb, and, and get those nutrient uptakes. It's not just sat in my stomach digesting, which I've mentioned before, was is one of the most energetic things your body can do. So you don't want to be digesting food, going for a workout, doing your cardio, or going to sleep. So let's move on to our uh, post-workout. So post-workout, I break into two meals. Uh, together, so this one post-workout meal, is uh, it's still that 45 grams of protein. It's, uh, it's about the same carb intake, so 67 grams of uh, carb, same as breakfast, and post-workout uh, fats, 10 grams, but I have that in my second post-workout meal. And what, what I mean by that is, as soon as I finished uh, training, I'm gonna have half my protein in the form of a shake. This is just a, a plant-based protein, pea and hemp, one that we're actually developing with True Performance. So whey protein, egg protein, whatever protein source it is, uh, I get I get uh, just 22 grams of protein in there. Meaning 30 minutes later, I'm gonna have another source of protein. I don't wanna overload my body with too many calories or too much protein or too much liquid meal straight after having weight training. So. You know, I'm still getting all of the food in, I'm not missing any of that um, anabolic window. So, and it's worked just fine for me over the years. So there would be uh, basically a scoop of protein and then I'd have, for my carbs, which is where I get most of my high glycemic carbs in the day, actually dates, 70 grams of medjool dates, it's really about three medium sized dates. Haven't got any with me here, I normally pick them up from just a, a store on the way back from the gym or on the way there. And then 30 minutes later, I have the remaining uh, amount of that allocated post-workout protein, carbs, and fats in the form of basically another meal. Um, whether it's 20 minutes, 15, 10, 30, but it's definitely within a kind of a 45 minute period. So this is my kind of post-workout food or dinner, if you like. It's, uh, it's a smaller amount because I've halved it, but you can see it's pretty much the same as any of the other meals. Pretty basic, but the way I cook it, it, it tastes good, and my body, my body actually craves this more than like any other type of food. Ground rice or yams, turkey patties with some veg, some flaxseed all over the top, and a little bit of spices when cooking the meat. Like I couldn't ask for anything more. This my post-workout meal, not my kind of liquid shake. 60 grams of turkey, 130 grams of yam potato. Uh, I can for fats. 15 grams of almonds, which is about 12 to 15 um, raw almonds to get fats. Again, giving me a little bit more variety and mixing up my, um, my fat sources in there, but again, that could be uh, like half a tablespoon of flaxseed oil, MCT oil, um, you know, uh, uh, omega-3 high kind of uh, fat oil works best for that. And then some veg in there. So that gives me the, uh, the rest of my post-workout nutrition. All right, night time. So this is where I've had my um, post-workout meal, probably about 7.30. I'm going to have a smaller meal around 10. And if you feel that by the time you go to bed, it's a bit too much to eat, like I said in a previous video, you can take half of that final meal, calories, protein, carbs, and kind of split that and put it into your post-workout or just distribute it to the... Uh, the other meals, but what I do with this, three basic ingredients, cottage cheese, almond butter, and casein, and it's kind of like a nighttime dessert, so we're gonna make that right now. This is all we need. So you can use uh, different protein, you can use whey protein, or whatever protein you normally get. Vanilla, I think, works best for this, and the reason I use casein is, A, it's a slower digesting protein. Secondly, because of um, how it's made, it's a little bit thicker too, so you add that in. I'm sure if you've had a casein protein shake and you use as much water as you might with a, a whey shake, the casein shake is gonna be a little bit thicker. And if you use just a little bit of water, you can literally make it into a, a paste and, and eat that. What we're doing here is uh, kind of like that. So I'm gonna start with uh, 40 grams of casein powder, which is what we've got in there. I'm gonna add into that uh, 70 grams of cottage cheese. This is uh, just a 4% milk fat minimum. 
Again, at this point, I'm not too worried about whether it's zero fat, 2%, 4%. 70 grams, I know from experience I'm eyeballing this, it's about two, two and a bit kind of heaped teaspoons. A little bit more. Clean the spoon. And then almond butter. I've actually got peanut butter here. This is a really good one I get from Trader Joe's. Peanut butter, flax, and chia seeds. This is where my fat source comes from. 15 grams here. Not a lot because if we start adding more in, we're going to bump up the fat content. And to a degree, you can take some of the fat from um, another meal and contribute a little bit more towards the. Uh, post-workout. So if you don't want any fat post-workout, that's an extra 10 grams that you can pretty much double up and have 30 grams of peanut or almond butter. But it's about a teaspoon like that. It's going to mix everything together. Now, I don't have a sweet tooth per se, but I do like my stevia. This is one just from a store up the road. Liquid stevia, you can use uh, granulated powder too. Tiny bit in there. A little bit of cinnamon too. Kind of all looks like that. And then mix it together. I actually put this into a blender food processor to really get it all like, mashed up together good. Tastes about the same, this is just a little bit more trickier and uh, harder with a smaller bowl. But I use the big ones up for cooking. And you might be thinking, well, cottage cheese with like protein powder or peanut or almond butter? Like, trust me, you don't taste anything of the cheese. You taste the vanilla from the uh, casting powder and you taste the, uh, the almond or peanut butter in there. And it's, it's it's delicious. You put this in the fridge for about 20 minutes, you're sat there, whatever you're doing at night, either on the computer, watching TV, movie, Netflix or something, you're eating this and it feels like it's, people use the word cheap food too much, but it, it feels like it's too good to be kind of within your diet. But you saw what we put in. Cottage cheese, so it's, it's a good nighttime protein because of the casein uh, content in there. A little bit of almond butter or peanut butter in this case and uh, protein powder, and that's all. Gosh, I haven't made it as attractive as, uh, as I normally do, but kind of like that. It's like, like a, a thick dessert. I can't show its, uh, its true benefit on the camera here, but give it a try. Use vanilla casein. Chocolate works well as well. A uh, little bit of coconut essence in there, or vanilla essence. Play around with uh, different spices like uh, cinnamon, a little bit of allspice, or a um, little bit of nutmeg, and it tastes amazing. So I'll save that for uh, tonight. Okay, the great thing is, out of all of those meals, you can just about see here at the bottom, this is my actual intake of all of these foods. And I've matched it up with protein was within a gram, carbs I was four grams over, fats I was one gram over. So all, all together, I got 2,700 calories there, which is pretty much exactly what I kind of set myself for my meal plan. Now, what this really means is if I stick with, let's just say, these exact meals every day at those times, I give myself four weeks. I'm not saying my body's going to tighten up and get in spectacular shape. I'm saying my body, I mean it would if I was eating, my calories were fluctuating. I'm saying that you're pretty much putting your body on a very controlled, focused diet. And by diet, I just mean the types of foods that we eat within our diet. When you start to change some of those factors, like I might drop my carb intake from 40 down to 35%. I might drop my calories from 15 calories per pound of body weight down to 14. These little changes which Day to day, you probably you won't even notice them. You're not going to notice cutting 15% of your daily carbon take, but your body will after the first week or so, and it will allow to uh, to give up a little bit more of that stored body fat, making it available as a fuel source. So you're kind of coaxing the body to um, basically give up 
some of it's survival fuel, body fat. The, the leaner we get, the less body fat we have, the more resilient your body is gonna be in giving up extra of that fat. So it might be relatively easy to get down to uh, from 10 to eight to kind of seven, 6%. And then when you start to wanna get the five and 4% or just get the lower kind of finger-like serrations on the abdominals and whatnot, that's where I feel this really helps and benefits you. So, uh, 40 minutes talking about the food. Hopefully it's been useful. I'm gonna to go to uh, some of your questions now and uh, see if we can answer questions relative about food prep. So I'll do that on the computer here and then it's coming up for uh, almost half a meal three with me. So again guys, I ask if you can keep questions relevant to um, food prep, meal preparation, as opposed to training because then that kind of carries me into a whole other uh, area of discussion. Okay, I got my laptop here. I'm just scrolling down so I can see questions. I can hear my dog barking outside. All right, all right, here we go. Okay, I'm seeing all of your questions come through. A uh, couple of you um, kind of talking back and forth between each other. Awesome, hope you guys get married. Uh, let me just look up here. Okay, so uh, a cheat day. Uh, let's talk about that. Is it okay to have a cheat day uh, once a week or only one cheat meal per week? Great question there. Sorry, I missed the name. The questions are kind of flying upwards. Yes, is the basic answer. Look, I, I look at it this way. Unless you're weeks out, three, four, five weeks from, and let's just say a competition where mentally and physically you've got to be on point with everything that you can do. Mainly because you don't want to step on stage or get in front of a camera or have a, you know, a body transformation um, period take place and be stepping on stage or in front of a camera, whatever it might be, and thinking, I'm not as good as I want to be, or you start to question, is it was, was it because I had that cheat meal or I didn't follow my meal plan exactly for the last couple of weeks? You want to remove all doubt. If you're completely committed, to a degree, you know that you've given it your absolute best. So when it comes to cheat meal, in the first couple of weeks, sure, if you have one cheat meal like every Friday night or Saturday, it can do a couple of things. One, it can keep you very focused on following a set type of meal, knowing that you're able to have something that you're craving or something that you wanna go out and have more of a social uh, gathering with, whatever that food might be. Um, go ahead, it will, it, I'd rather you stay focused and committed from Monday through to Friday or Monday through to Saturday night, Sunday you kind of have more of a, a relaxed food intake and then get back on plan on, uh, on Monday. When it comes to a cheap meal as opposed to a day, because that can just blow your, uh, your calorie and your macros completely out and if essentially you're telling your body, look, we're kind of putting into a con controlled nutrition uh, intake, but then every, every Sunday, one day a week, we're just gonna put and dump basically a bunch of saturated fats, empty calories, sugar back in. It's gonna give the body no reason to give up more body fat if it knows that that's kind of a regular routine. So a cheat day, no. A cheat meal, sure. And you don't have to worry too much about the numbers. All I'd do is, uh, look, let's say if it was a burger, burger and fries, potato chips, french fries, wherever in the world you are, whatever you call them, just have it and don't worry about the numbers. Replace one of your meals, maybe the meal before you kind of drop or half your carbs, but like you just replace one meal with your cheat meal. After so many weeks of doing that and you start to see more progress happening, you'll, you'll know when to cut back and take, uh, take that cheat meal out. But once a week is fine and I'd schedule it if need be just so that you know uh, you've got something to look forward to. So in the first four weeks of a, of a, a meal prep plan, a cheat meal once a week is fine, I'd say. Okay, let's go to uh, a couple more questions. How do you find it best to buy store food when planning meal prep so you don't throw away uh, money without eating much of the same continually? I hate throwing away food. That's from James Foy. Very good question, James, and uh, I've been there myself. So this is another reason why I know exactly what food type I have and the amount. And there's one thing I'm working on with the next kind of phase of like a meal prep planner, and you can do this yourself if, if, you, if you get this plan, is I know with a fair amount of accuracy how much in terms of weight, how much eggs, chicken, turkey, 
I have. If I was to replicate this seven days a week and basically count up each meal times seven, the amounts, I know that I'd have this much egg whites to get and I would know that based on each egg white having, or each egg having, you know, about 30 grams of egg whites, I can pretty much calculate how many eggs I need each week. A little bit tricky on that level, but you can get it down very accurately that based on the amounts of those foods you have each day. Uh, I knew that was gonna happen. Phone, phone finally gave, gave way. Okay, let's wrap it up before it happens again. Just by keeping track of um, keeping track of the amounts of foods that you have, it's pretty easy then to just tally them up for the week. And that's why I allow different uh, meals, James, for meal two, three, and four. So I do have that variation, I have that option. If not, I can just have the same like meal two, three times and still get the same numbers. So it takes a little bit of uh, planning and, and preparation in that sense. But once you get it down and you understand it's pretty easy to, uh, someone keeps asking, is it live? Yeah, I see the questions. It's live, we're happening live. That's why the phone falls and dogs are running around outside. All right, uh, next question. Uh, okay, okay, there's, sorry, I missed the name. There's a question about um, oils, how I use oils for cooking. Uh, coconut oil, mostly, definitely with eggs, uh, with meats as well. I use a little bit of coconut oil on a medium low heat on the pan. Reason for that is it has a much higher tolerance to heat than something like olive oil or vegetable oil, which, uh, which I don't use. Just so that, what that means, and I, I write about this in the book a lot, what that means is uh, when heat, or fat, sorry, but especially oils are subjected to a high heat, they start to um, turn rancid. You're basically uh, changing its molecular nutrient structure. Uh, this is where people start to freak out about cancer with too much fats or cooked oils, especially if it's like um, um, deep fried food. But that, that's why, because the fats turn rancid. So cooking with coconut oil where it's, uh, it can withstand a much higher heat. Cooking eggs and meats on, on, on a pan with a medium to low heat, you know, it's not, you're not really gonna change the structure of that and turn that fat rancid. Apart from that, uh, the actual fats I put on my meats, flaxseed oil is a great one. So is things like macadamia oil. I use uh, olive oil. This is one, again, I pick, pick something up from Trader Joe's. So things high in um, omega-3 fatty acids and also cold pressed, anything, any kind of heat uh, that's been put through the oil is not good, stay away from that. So cold pressed oils uh, are definitely gonna be best for that. All right, a couple more questions. Okay, Lewis said, how did I come up with the 15 calories per gram of body weight and is that lean mass or total weight? How did I come up with that? It, just a calculation based on when I've tried to, in a sense, bulk and really cut down and also seeing what I responded best to with um, the amount of protein per pound of lean muscle mass. So there's various calculations out for working that out. Uh, for me, it's about 1.5 to 1.7 gram and based on the amount of protein I'd want from my, the amount of food I have, I was kind of seeing this number 14, 16 pop up a lot. So as a kind of a general rule of thumb, it was like, okay, let's start with 15 calories per pound of total body weight. So I weigh 181 pounds at the moment. Um, that fluctuates from day to day, but that's when I weighed myself at the beginning of last week, that's the number I set with. I'm just gonna stick with that for the four weeks. Even though my weight might change, obviously, over the coming weeks, at this point, I'm not going to start affecting and changing uh, those numbers. That will come in the second stage, kind of beginning of week five, where I'll weigh myself again and then change some of those numbers based on that weight and seeing if my results are as I expected. I'd say 15 is a great starting point. Um, this question about calories per pound of body weight, go back and look at the other video because uh, I talked more about a higher range and a lower range. But for me, it's anywhere from 11 calories per pound of body weight when I'm like really on those final peak weeks, all the way up to even 19, 20, 22 calories per pound of body weight if my focus is a little bit more on allowing for surplus um, weight gain and, and effectively building muscle. 
I have two more questions. Okay, uh, I just missed that question, but it was something about which diet do I felt uh, allowed me to get into the best possible conditioning. So I've done two kind of different types of diet. One is, as I've showed you here, another one which I was favoring a couple of years back was the paleo diet, paleolithic caveman diet, basically taking out any processed, manufactured, man-made types foods, which cuts out a lot of um, carbohydrates. In fact, I, I really didn't have carbohydrates in the form of, um, I mean, naturally occurring carbohydrates, especially from plants, but they're more um, starch-based. But I, I wouldn't even have yams, even though they, they're kind of allowed. And I found that I wasn't focusing on my numbers quite as much. I was just eating kind of proteins and fats with a lot of fiber, a lot of plant-based uh, vegetables in there too. And I could get lean, I could keep my strength. Where I felt there's a difference between the two was when I start to get into carb cycling, carb modification and carb cycling with this type of diet, I felt I could keep my muscles full and really get kind of quite lean and have great conditioning. Paleo, I could get lean with great conditioning, but I felt I didn't have that fullness probably because of the uh, um, glycogen storage within the muscle. So if you're looking to just get in great shape, shape with, uh, without too much focus on a diet, that paleo type diet may work well for you, especially if you're liking your meats and fats and you're not gonna miss your carbs. If your focus is on getting to the absolute best shape, give this one a try with the carbohydrates and over the following weeks we'll start to manipulate carbs uh, and go through an actual carb cycling method. That for me allowed me to get into the, the best shape. But we're talking like, you know, if, if you see photos side by side, you probably wouldn't really be able to tell the difference. But for me, I just felt I could nail my conditioning that little bit better on uh, using carbs. Hi right, guys, one more question because uh, I do have to get back to work and get stuff going. Uh, okay, James, how much red meat do I consume in a week? If I had all seven meal plans, I could tell you the exact amount here. Red meat, um, a fair amount. I mean, as you've seen today, this is a very typical food breakdown, and um, I get most of my protein from chicken, turkey, and then I use tuna. I can use red meat. Uh, my fat content goes up a little bit, so I've got to be careful about either not adding um, extra fat sources in there, or here's the thing, if I add enough red meat to get um, the protein amount, sometimes depending on the meat and depending on the uh, amount that I've allocated, there's too much fat in that meat. So I have to have a certain amount of red meat to match my fat quantity and then make up that protein amount with egg whites or something else. So I realized we're getting really down to like, is it gonna make an absolute difference? But if I wanna follow my plan and stick to my regimen, yes. Same goes with salmon too, it's a higher fatty food. So if I'm getting 40 grams of protein from a, a piece of salmon, my fat content is definitely gonna be higher than 10 grams. It's gonna be more like 20, 22 grams. So a couple of things I can do there. One, I can have a lesser amount of salmon to match that 10 grams and bump up the extra protein from a different fish sauce or uh, egg whites or tuna or I can just have the maximum amount of salmon to hit my protein intake and then reduce fat from somewhere else from another meal maybe that post-workout or just take it down lower throughout the whole day so that's how I kind of get around that all right uh, one more question then I really have to be going okay a couple of people asking about vegan uh, plans here there, I've got a kind of a meal plan on my website, Rob, which is Fitness Under Nutrition, where I talk about vegan. It's not something I've looked into too much just because I'm not vegan. It's just a lifestyle choice for me. So uh, have a look on my website. When it does come to proteins, you do want to make sure that you're getting uh, your complete spectrum of essential amino acids. So with that, you've got to look at protein combining. You can't just have whatever food group that you get your protein in. And it, there is a different mentality, of course. So I, I am aware of that. I'm not really not hating on on uh, and anyone who follows that. We all have our own choices. This is just my choice that I'm talking about. So check out more of my website about the vegan thing. Uh, okay, uh, final question, Adam Barnett is uh, eating mince okay? Minced meat or talking more like mince uh, beef or lamb? Because my, my turkey patties were minced. Obviously, when they mince meat, they're probably not using the highest select cut, so you're probably getting uh, either a lesser quality type of protein in there and probably a little bit more fats in there. 
I've been fine with that. So yes, it's okay eating mints, um, but still go for the leanest cut. You don't want to just get a cheap kind of minced meat, turkey, minced chicken, or lamb or beef. And again, look out for the fat content. But yeah, I do eat that. Okay. Uh, Alex keeps asking about how big are my arms. They're not, not huge, just I've got a short bicep peak. So 17, 17 and a bit inches. It's been a long time since I've weighed them, but this is just about shape and conditioning for me and, and getting back to what I feel was the best level of conditioning, probably around 2011 or, or 10, um, and trying to push beyond that. So um, I'm gonna wrap things up now. Uh, one second. But if you are interested in learning more about nutrition, much of what I've spoken about is of interest to you, um, just check out my book. Here it is, Ultra Lean. It's 260 odd pages. Uh, I wrote it myself. Weeda uh, or Muslim Fitness published it with me. Um, and it's got everything about, everything kind of about nutrition, uh, including a kind of a 12 week. That's my girlfriend calling. That's where, every time someone calls, uh, the phone, phone goes on pause. So go check out this if you're interested. You can find it on, um, uh, True Performance and Nutrition or uh, my website, Rob Richards Shop. There's an ebook available, uh, which we've had some issues with the transaction key, but we get all of those sent out to you after as well. Or you can get the hardback book, and if you want me to sign it, just mention on there, and uh, I'll actually write, sign it myself, and we ship it out. This meal plan, go to my website, Rob Richards Fitness, and click on Nutrition. You'll be able to see a link to get it there. Again, thank you for all of your questions. I know we have. Uh, you guys are asking a lot of questions, so I hope I covered a lot of them within this um, kind of video here. If not, my book, I'm sure will cover a lot more. And for the sake of repeating myself, just please keep posting your questions. Every video, every live video, uh, I'm gonna try and do more actually looking at questions and relate what I'm talking about to them. But again, it, it can be tricky when, uh, when the phone's right there and I'm trying to be in, in, in shot here. I think I'm in the middle here and also answer your questions. So not as easy as some of the other videos, but on that note, listen guys, we're coming up. I'm gonna do another video tomorrow, Friday. This will be 11 a.m. I'm gonna try and do it back in the gym, Gold's gym. I won't be walking around filming, but if we can set it up outside, you're gonna have great scenery in a gold gym and maybe we can meet a few more uh, well-known fitness personalities at the gym. So we, I've been speaking for an hour. Feel free to look back over this video. Again, you can go to my playlist on Facebook. Just go to my Facebook page. You're watching it now, obviously. Uh, some of the tabs up at the top, it says um, videos. Click on that and you'll see this and about six or seven other live video streams that we've done. So uh, we'll get back to more of your questions on following videos. We'll do fitness tomorrow and then come Monday, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, typically 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We'll start to uh, run through some of these questions and get them answered. So, that's about now an hour. Listen guys, thank you. I'll see you back uh, about a, a day from now, this time tomorrow.